Hi everyone, good afternoon. Um, I guess welcome firstly to a new, new era for the kangaroos. Um, interestingly, the test that we go into on May 6 is number 131 between the kangaroos and the kiwis, um, but it'll be number one for our new coach, Mal Meninga. And it gives me great pleasure, of course, to announce the team for this test. I'm pleased to say that the players in the, in the squad have 272 test matches between them, making it the fourth most experienced lineup in Australia's test history. Six members of the, squ of the squad have played 25 tests or more. And at fullback from the Brisbane Broncos, Darius Boyd. On the wing from the Parramatta Eels, Semi Radradra. At centre from South Sydney Rabbitohs, Greg Inglis. And accompanying uh, uh, Greg in the centres is Josh Dugan from St George Illawarra Dragons. And on the other wing from the Sydney Roosters, Blake Ferguson. At 5'8", from North Queensland Cowboys, Jonathan Thurston. At halfback from the Melbourne Storm, Cooper Cronk. And in the front row from North Queensland Cowboys, Matt Scott. At hooker and captaining his country for the 21st time from the Melbourne Storm, Cameron Smith. The other front rower from Cronulla Sutherland Sharks, Paul Gallen. In the second row from Canberra Raiders, Josh Papali. And from Brisbane Broncos, Matt Gillette. At lock, also from the Brisbane Broncos, Corey Parker. And the interchange bench is as follows. From the Brisbane Broncos, Josh Maguire. From the North Queensland Cowboys, Michael Morgan. Also from the North Queensland Cowboys, James Tamo. And from the Brisbane Broncos, Sam Thiday. Um, Mal and the selectors have named a 19-man squad to take into camp. And the 18th man from the Sydney Roosters, Aidan Guerra. And the 19th man from the Parramatta Eels, Michael Jennings. Open to your questions. Thank you very much. Four debutants, yeah, four mm. debutants, four players that didn't play last year as well. So, um, yeah, kept a the nucleus of a of a side that's been playing together for for a number of years. But um, yeah, I'm very happy with the with the squad. I think it's a very strong squad. Six captains, so experience is right. Yeah. Mm. Um, well, I think he deserves. His form deserves to be a starter. Um, difficult. When you've got so many great back rowers playing, particularly with Corey Parker being the incumbent um, and still in great form, but um, we thought Gal was, you know, deserved of a spot, so you know that's why he's playing the front row. Mal, was it Gal's form over the past sort of three weeks that got him the jersey? How did you feel about? That? Oh, I think I think it's been part of his his persona really over a number of years. You know, the way he goes about his business. I think we we need a hard edge in our our forward pack. You know, based on. On you know the last few few games we played against the Kiwis, um, we've I think the team's missed him, and certainly in his form lately he's been excellent. And on the weekend he was very very good. So you know that leadership and that hard edge that he brings to a team you know is really important. When you spoke to him the other night at the Blues, you know how much of a sense did you get and what this meant to him, and how much he missed it over the last year? Yeah, no, I I loved it actually. Loved the conversation with him because um, you know. He, he showed me how passionate he was about playing rep football. Certainly, you know, put on the green and gold jersey. Um, I like that in a player. You know, obviously, we're trying to you know, make some more inroads around the international international scene and certainly get the Kangaroos back up to where they where they belong. So, um, you know, he's a very important part of part of that. Oh no, it's all good. Now we've um, we've had a. You know, been in, in teams before where I, I captain, or sorry, the coach, the, the Prime Minister certainly has been part of all that. So, I mean, I know him um, as a person quite well. So, you know, obviously, you know, coaching against him is not a, is not a good thing, but having him on the same side is a better thing, you know. So, I'm looking forward to it. It's hard. It's hard, Margie, to, you know, put all those great players into, into 17. You know, I'm very, very comfortable in the selectors when we sat around the table last week. Um, we had those same sort of conversations, you know, around who we put in, who we leave out. But um, at the end of the day, um, with I think we picked our best Australian team, and that's what's going to go and play, you know, against the Kiwis, you know, Friday week. Now it's a really unique situation with the seventy How how did you grapple with that? How did you make the decision? Um, well, at the end of the day, he's eligible to play for Australia. Um, he's the best winger in the competition. Um, again, he showed that on the other night, um, and he deserves to be here. So I mean. Pretty hard, you know, not to put him put him in the side when he's eligible. Your first test announcement, I put you in an awkward situation. 
Oh, not really. It is unusual, but you can't you can't come through the, the state uh, program. It's you know, based on the rules as it is now. So, um, you know, we had to you know, make a decision based on it on it on that merit, and um, we felt that you know he's the best left winger run around in the competition. Um, you know, I, I'm here to, I'm here to coach the, the Kangaroos. You know, I, I, I've got a, obviously a deep passion for the game of rugby league, and I want the game of rugby league to be, a, you know, a force internationally. Um, but the rules are the rules, and you know, obviously, um, it's not perfect at the moment. But what is? In anything we do in life, you know. So he, he deserves to be in the footy team because um, he is the best player in that position. And that's why he's there. Well, I think we'd be a bit silly now, to be honest with you, with our commentary. You know, I think, um, you know, Semi, and we've all we all been extolling his virtues as a player the last two years, you know. Um, so let's give him a bit of a break and uh, let's move on. Um, he's going to do Australia proud. Have you spoke to him about why he wants to play for Australia? Well, he's got a passion. He's, he's, he's lived here for over three years. He's eligible to play for, play for Australia. He wants to play for Australia. Um, I didn't coerce him to play for Australia. It was his, it was his own decision. So, because of that, um, again, it's a bit like Gal. He wants to play. He wants to put the green and gold jersey on, and Sammy's in the same boat. That's important because people like say in New Zealand or England will accuse you of having um, gone out. So yeah, they won't accuse me. But at the, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm coaching the Kangaroos, and to be honest with you, uh, he deserves to be in the footy team, and I'm looking forward to coaching him. <coughs> Oh, first, just to speak to Mal's point, you know, Mal's job is to pick the best team to win the test matches against the international competitors. That's his job. And therefore, the players that come through a set of rules are in place, so the players he's going to choose from. The international rules are international rules. They're consistent not only in our sport across all nations, but they're consistent across other sports as well. So three years, three years will qualify you to be able to play for your nation. And, you know, individual players have aspirations. You know, we've always said, always said this, you can't, if you're, you can't stop players having aspirations. And mm -hmm. in Sammy having the aspiration to play for Australia, of course, he foregoes the opportunity to play for, for Fiji for two years. And he's made a conscious decision. And it's a really interesting decision when you think, when you sort of expand that and you think about the four nations, because, you know, we'll take a squad of 25 to the four nations, 25 out of 16, what is it, 16 times four, 35 players probably in, in NRL. So a very, very small percentage of players get to play for Australia. So I think players in Semi's position who, who can qualify for playing for Australia will think very carefully about that nomination because they could forego the right to play in a World Cup for their nation. And I think the rules spell it out and I think the rules cater for both the aspirational needs or desires of players plus the needs of international, international uh, playing countries. Oh, I think International Rugby League is in a better shape now than it's ever been because the NRL in, in the Southern Hemisphere and the Super League in the Northern Hemisphere are the two nurseries for rugby league players from all countries. You know, we've got, we had a better standard of football in the 2013 World Cup because we had players who came into those nations who played in the NRL or played in the Super League. That's the, that's the best way to elevate the standard of football right across all the nations to bring players in through those two national competitions. And that's what's happening. So, you know... When, when Fiji sits down to choose their team for the, for the World Cup and when the other nations sit down to choose their teams for the World Cup, they have a lot more players to choose from than otherwise if it weren't for the NRL comp and the Super League comp. So the system works very well in my view. Do you think, Tony, if um, Sebi becomes a mainstay in the Australian team and how possibly more players follow his, follow his lead, then there will be pressure for those players to get out of the back frankly? Oh, no, I don't. I think they're totally different things. Um, state of origin, you know, we did the research two, two years ago, we know what state of origin is, it's state of origin and that's, we're not going to tinker with that, that's something that's um, a very valuable franchise for this game and something that Queensland people and New South Wales people love at their core and the rest of Australia and the world loves because it's the greatest game, greatest, one of the greatest contests in the world, we're not going to tinker with that. Uh, it doesn't come to thinking. It's you know who's the best players are. You know, obviously, um, when you look at the competition at the moment and who are the best teams in the competition, um, you know the Broncos, the Cowboys, 
Uh, the top, most of the players come from the top five currently, you know, playing the competition as well. And then you look at state of origin, you know, as a, as a um, you know as a, a vehicle you know to select from. So um, it's never a conscious decision. It's just do who are the best players in their best positions. And um, you know, like I said, I'm very happy with in the strength of the team. <laughs> well, you can't blue too much, can you? Surely. I mean, I'm. I don't know what you think about the team, but you know, I'm. I'm pretty happy with it. Now you touched on the tremendous experience in this side. There was great depth last time you played for the Kiwis as well. Why are you confident this side can get the job done? I think. I think. Probably initially it was attitude. You know, I, I look at the game in the last few games, and um, I think you know attitude wasn't where it quite should be um, around the set test series and I've often said and that's the reason why you know the review process come into place last year around you know trying to invigorate, invigorate um, you know the pro national program you know give the kangaroos more relevance amongst the players so um, and that's been our charter ever since then that reviews that's one of the reasons why um, the Australian River League Commission elected me to be the, the national coach is to try to give that passion back so um, I think that's one of the reasons, and then obviously you know, on the back of a you know, really good attitude and a better passion for the green grey jersey, we're going to go and play a lot better as well. You know, does the work and the talks with the players have to start now to ensure you take the strongest possible squad to the Four Nations? Because every time yeah. it happens, there's a massive draw. That's exactly right. So I mean, um, that's it. Now, so we've got to, like I said, make make the kangaroos more relevant, and and you know, when the hopefully when the the players come into camp you know, next week. Um, they see that, they see the passion that I have and my staff have and the game has for the Kangaroos and trying to put them back on that pedestal where, they, where it belongs. I think you know, a, a successful Australian side is going to all go well for you know, a strong international program as well. You know, so where we're, wherever a successful Kangaroo side goes and plays, people want to go watch them. And that's, how we, that's one of the reasons why, you know, one of the areas we need to, need to do, you know, need to um, increase. So... Um, We'll see what happens. You know, see what happens with this footy team. You know, see how they respond to the challenges. See how they respond to, you know, New Zealand side, who are, you know are the best team in the in the world at the moment in rugby league. So, um, like I said, I'm looking forward to, you know, being amongst it all, and again, and looking forward to, you know, being involved with the players, and um, we'll see where, where it takes us. You know, Friday week. Yeah, exactly. But um, you know, I just talking to some of the players. You know, they look all looking forward to it. Um, you know, so it's it's something that we've got to rebuild internally. So there's a few things we're going to chat about um, internally um, around you know processes and values um, that I want the players to buy into and, and take ownership over. I want the players to you know come out of that game becoming great advocates. You know, for the kangaroo program as well, and going back to their clubs and. And uh, telling them mates how what a great experience that was, and you know I want to go back there. So that's, again, that's you know as part of my role as a, as the the national coach is to, you know, for the players to you know love what they do and and love putting that green gold jersey on and get successful again. Can I just can I just add can I just add to what Mal's saying? I and mean, this is the start of a journey. There's going to be two training sessions before this team plays, right? So things are not going to change dramatically overnight. What we've got is a great team. It's going to perform really, really well against the world champions, and we know we know in this game we're up against it. But Mal's, Mal will build this team. That's the idea, you know. And the Four Nations gives us five weeks over which we again continue to build that into the World Cup next year. So this is a journey, and we're patient with the outcomes along this journey, but with the expectation that we're going to perform very strongly along the way. Well, am I tell me what's what Steve's like? Perhaps he's coaching uh, pro S, but um, no, not really. I mean, we're going to concentrate on ourselves, Margie, around um, around our attitude. Like again, like I said, you know, just get our attitude right, and um, you know, make sure you know we're ready to go. Now, can I ask about, can I ask about uh, Blake Ferguson? It's the ultimate story of redemption, isn't it? Yeah, it is, um, and I think he deserves it. You know, he's a lot of been a long, hard road, and from the good old Cronulla days, the Raiders, um, you know, and. Um, you know, I think he's. Well, I know his um, selection warranted. So you know, his form's been pretty good of late as well. And 
Um, we've got some big bodies out wide, and Sammy's part of all that. You know, um, you know, we're starting to, like as John said, we're starting to rebuild this this, this footy team, and I think you know Blake's got a huge future in, in the game, particularly internationally as well. What about him and Josh Dugan? Well, they're mates, aren't they? You know, so I mean, that's a, that's you can take those into consideration around combinations. So uh, they are mates, and they play together numerous times. And um, yeah, no, I'm I'm pretty sure that they'll look forward to playing with each other um, in the kangaroo jersey. Mm. Yeah, well, exactly. Well, I mean, I think you know, the ultimate, the ultimate to me, the ultimate um, selection to get get inv- is to be selected in the Kangaroos, and that's all all around the, about the person as well. Not only their their playing ability is around; um, they are should be our, you know, true role models in our, of our game, and they've they've done a tough yeah, both of them. But um, you know, they come out the other side; they're playing terrific form for the club and. They're the great uh, community men within the clubs as well. So I mean, you know, they've turned their lives around, which is fantastic. Um, so, so it's not only good footballers, but you know, good people. And I think um, that is becoming of a, of a kangaroo. Now, now you've obviously had a bit to do with them through your association with the Raiders. What, how satisfying is it for you to see them <coughs> and their lives around? Um, oh, it's great. It's great. I mean, it's see, deep down they're all good. They're always good people, you know. But this bit of poor direction at some at stages in their career, their lives, and that's what everyone has to go through. No matter if they play professional sport or they don't, you know, they've got to find their own way. And uh, but they've always been true, had a true heart in them. And I think you know, I, kn- I knew them knew them when they did play at the Raiders, and and because of that true heart, and they've they come out the other side, you know, better for the experience. And and I think that then transfers onto the on the footy field. Oh, they're still, I still, they're still going on their little journey, you know, the journey word, you know, they're still, they're still going, you know, they're still young people, so um, they can only get better in my, in my mind. Now, young Corey Oates has been in sensational form for the Broncos. How close do you think he'll come? Do you have a message for him? Um, well, yeah, he's, he's um, still, we're still, we've still got some shadow players, you know, so we've got 19 players, we've still got a weekend to go, we've, we've talked about Corey, um, uh, his form's tr- tremendous, still hasn't played, I mean, he, did, he still haven't played at the origin level, so I mean, um, but he's in the picture, you know, so, and deservedly so. Josh Mansour is in a, another example as well, you know, the left wing. Um, yeah, so we've got some uh, some thinking to do down the track. Um, if we get, particularly if we've got some injuries this weekend, we've obviously got to reevaluate uh, the team, but um, certainly up in the picture for Four Nations. The last time- I think a better balanced footy team. Uh, I talked to Greg about it all, and it's not. I mean, I know Greg and the high expectations he has of himself, and obviously the general public have, you know. So, um, but at the moment, I think the team um, uh, wants wants Greg in, in the centres, and I think he identifies with that. And Darius's form is is pretty good at the moment. You know, the form fullback, and um, again, if we're going to pick a kangaroo side based on the best players. Um, you know that's that's why you know those two guys are in the footy team. What's your understanding of where his body is at and what he's capable of in terms of? Mate, his body's body's fine. He's just working his butt off, honestly, to get back to you know his high expectations. You know, not everybody else's his high expectations. So I know Greg will come in to the kangaroo camp, and the majority of his footy's been played in the centres anyway at rep level. You know, whether it be state or or country. So you know he's not foreign to that, and then. That adds a bit of like, continuity around, you know, playing outside John as well. So, you know, again, I think that's a bonus for us. Are his expectations on par with the public? Probably higher at times, you know. So, um, you know, all those great players, they're, they're their, their own fiercest critics, you know. So for him, um, you know, he's working really hard behind the scenes and injury's not an issue. He's, got, he's not making any excuses. He's just turned off the social media. Uh, so he doesn't listen to everybody, you know. So... Um, He's got that many. He's a he's a great player, and he'll prove everyone wrong once again. How would you like to see him make it? Uh, move to the centres with a better, better history. Uh, it's a something. It's a decision he left to make down the track. I think you know. Um, it all depends on you know who they also they can put it at South Sydney. At, you know, Rabbitohs fullback. You know, um, but again, Greg's the ultimate team player too. Don't forget him. He's a great player, but he'll put the others before himself, and he'll play. You know, where. He, where the team wants him to play, where the coach wants him to play. Oh, cheer for Queensland. Oh, not when I select the Australian side.